can. And everyone that I can. So, you don't want to grab lunch? I'll wing it for five minutes. It might be very bad, but at least there's some content, you know. How can it be bad? I thought you were the, the top. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the definitely best. the best. But sometimes I'm the best of the worst. And then... Yeah, I still don't understand anything you're saying right now, Black. Exactly, that's the point. <laughs> Let's, 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 let's keep you on your toes. Down. Keeping you on your toes. Yeah, exactly what I need. Exactly what I need. We're going to be jumping into the draft finally here, and it is going to be Curtis Pro versus TNC, second matchup of the day. And the stakes definitely kicked up. We've already mentioned it, but if you are able to take down this series, all of a sudden you're looking at a much easier road headed into that double elimination bracket than if you were to drop the ball here. And uh, we're going to be getting it started. What do you actually expect to see now in this draft, Gods? Um. I am. I mean, I imagine we'll see some of the same opening picks, just picking some Medusas early on, and still in the pool, um, getting some of those really high impact four positions early on as well. That keeps him come out, keepers or spirit band out. Um, question back. How good is Io? We keep seeing Io banned. Is Io? Io? I feel like is just is default to banning because they're used to banning it. But I'm not convinced it's necessarily like this must ban hero right now. I think Io right now is only really strong if you have like a. Like an expert on it, like a GH, something like that. But if you're just an average IO player, I actually believe the hero is not as good. Okay. Because last series was, and I think all three games, mm -hmm. uh, mostly by Ehom, I want to say. Because like yeah. VP, VP Roger plays it well. Very well, yeah. yeah. But yeah, as I said, if, if it's not an expert, it just kind of feels like it's really hard to use the new relocate now. Like only people that play it a lot really know how to use it properly now. Because it's like longer duration, I mean, or ra rather longer cast time. It's really hard to obviously bring them out of the fight. Hey Black, what picks do you think is coming? They banned an anti mage. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> this is like the, the first ban. Let's just keep picking Medusa. You know, it keeps working. So well, TNC screw could, it. Tensi could just first pick. They yeah. could. Yeah. You... Why not? Nah, I'm gonna go Mag. I think yeah. this is okay. I think Mag is actually one of the best answers to a Medusa. Because Medusa likes to play a somewhat slow game. Yeah. You and can so your farm. Yeah. Whoever you're empowering, it's just like okay, sweet. Or Lich again. I think Lich Duck. Not go. Lich do so. Okay. I mean, you don't ban Ant Mage and don't go do so. Kanka. First two. Kanka. Kind of Medusa counter in any way, do you think? Or it might also still be support. Not a great support though, I think. Right now, like there's so much emphasis on the laning phase that the Kanka kind of. Yeah, Kanka Magnus like three four lane doesn't sound that scary or yeah potent by any means. I mean. Goosa should have a hard lane on tape, yeah. right? Just get denied. I think that's the idea behind this first two Kunkas. Let's get the hero that can Five match up mid and remaining. just out from her, out CS her, give her the roughest lane possible. Um, you could have maybe gone for the OD other teams have gone, but Kunka, you've got in power for this game, so um, we can really see this Kunka be enabled to have a fantastic start. Very solid for sure. It's also Mel, who's, you know, the, him versus no one, like to me, the story of this ma this matchup. So I think he sees it's Medusa and he instantly knows what hero he wants to play against Medusa. He's yeah. probably telling his captain, just pick me this now. I don't want it to get banned out. Yeah. And then we obviously still have the team fight potential of Kunkka as well. Kunkka Magnus. This is some insane team fight possibilities. I see ban OD, I guess, right? Realizing that, you know, Kunk the Medusa could go side lane. Yeah. And OD crushes great. Kunkka mid lane. So that now confirms that Kunkka is actually mid lane. Wouldn't make sense to ban the OD otherwise. Yeah. Uh, the, the Lich pick though. I'm a really big Lich fan. I feel like Lich rarely loses. You no, know, at the minor, it had 80% win rate out of 15 games or something like that. It was ridiculous. Ten seconds so, what if you were to see, what would you Five do against Lich? Remaining. I'm gonna have to address the Lich. It's so you? hard though. Yeah. Like the hero, so good. You I want to say you don't go too open on the physical damage, but you've got Magnus, so you want to get somebody to empower. Yeah. Um, like the best way, obviously, is to purge off the shield, but it's yeah. only Nullifier does that. Or a Shadow okay. Demon, but you don't Brew, have Brew it. Brewmaster. I've seen some teams do Brewmaster. Yeah, um, that's but, a possibility. I mean, based on their last game, it was the three position Magnus, so more likely to see Rio playing Magnus, and then they get some high impact supports. Yeah. I'd like to see some just big team fight. Like, I think Phoenix is a great hero. Teen Seed Boys being really good on. Gives him good team fight, gives him magic damage, fire spirits against Medusa. You don't care about that, the Lich armor as well. Mm. I think building some big team fight around Phoenix so you can actually go Ten head on 5v5 could look nice. Yeah, well, it's also kind of risky though. Five going 5v5 five five against Medusa, one of, one of her strongest yeah. assets in the game, right? Uh, just depend on 
can see these guys love to fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they love to brawl for sure. I don't know yeah. team fight necessarily, but they definitely love to brawl. They run in, they kill you, run out, and then run back in again. Definitely their specialty. What do you think about a bad about a ban? Um, boy, I think there was was it played in one of the games just now. I might I can't recall. But that right or what? Magic damage maybe going to cause some problems in the lane, but I I don't know why. I think Ryan actually odd. plays one of the. It's one of his better heroes, I would say. Bad Rider. I remember him having quite a lot of games on that hero. Yeah, Bad Rider to me never win. Like he has some he has a good lane, but he just doesn't end games. He just doesn't do much. What do you think about the Lich though? You were the one who kinda of brought up the question. I haven't heard you say it yet. What do you think actually needs to happen in the yeah. draft? Do you think they need to play around it? So, as I said, like I've been like screaming quite a lot. Like having a lot of practice games against other teams and stuff. When every this glitch just seems just really hard to initiate Five properly seconds. because the guy you initiate on, he gets a frost shield, the entire team just gets slowed, and then you're in a really rough spot on the team fight already. Or if you want to push the tower, he puts the frost on the tower, and then suddenly your entire team is slowed as well. I just think he's a really solid hero, and he might I even be on the verge of, you know. I mean, he's getting first pick, first ban all the time. Yeah, and now you've got Lich with Grimstrap, which is one of the oh, best players in Dota. Lich so. Grimstrap, double Lich ult is ridiculous, man. Yeah. That is, That's it's brutal. Like, losing team fights right now is not... I don't think it's going to happen. And you're losing team fights to support is what's crazy about this combo. You, there's I'm surprised so they got fighting. through, actually. Like, you, yeah. Either of those two, if they're not picked up first phase, both of them, one of them gets banned, usually. So getting this combo that late is very nice for, for VP, for sure. He responds. I mean, they need to have something like a, like a juggernaut could be I think even going back to the PA, I mean, PA sounds bad because it's so much physical damage, but I don't mind it because you can just jump the supports and blow them up. You think PA is better than Jug as carry position? I can do so. Because Jug is kind of immune combo, at least. Yeah, with the Blade Fury. I mean, PA, you, you're immune when you get your BKB. It's like, I, you, you just want to carry that's going to build BKB. I mean, 100%. Mm. Now right. you see the tide, so... PA Lane is rough. Tied. Yeah, PA sounds rough. Jug does sound a whole lot better now. Jug um, is also a bit rough though. Slark is pretty good. It's Slark good against Tide against Medusa. Medusa. Yeah. And then, you just ult when the Lich Chain Frost comes out or something. It's a bit scary against the Grimstroke, uh, whatever the Phantom silence. it is. Yeah. yeah. Phantom seconds. Embrace. But I think the hero could be good here. He gets a good landing phase for sure. He Five can snowball. They have good setup for it. They have M Power for Slark, which is really good. I could see it work. Uh, the last bit of support for yeah, position 4. Yeah, not sold on Slark as a hero, but I, this, if there's a game for Slark, it's something like this. And sure enough, yeah. So, so you're much. not sold on Slark, but here, this seems like a, a wise decision in your mind? If you can't pick Slark here, then the hero is absolutely yeah. garbage. So, yeah. this is this is the game for a Slark. It's a great matchup versus Tide and Medusa, which are the two core heroes on the other side. So, you want to address them with your, your pick here. You don't worry about remain. what the supports bring to the table with your your, your carry pick here. Yeah. As a Slark, there is like the Slark Dream. You have M Power on your own team, you have Grave, you have Kunkka Boat. There's so many things going for you. It's yeah, like, yeah. it's a perfect Slark game so far at least. And VP will have to address it. They, they'll pick something like a Faces Void, I think, just to shut it down. ENC so he's yeah. probably gonna look to ban that hero. Who big? Void. They, they, they think it... Turn to Might pick. be. Hmm. I mean, they definitely can't just. Last time they ran five position Dazzle there, Ninja Boogie played it, and yeah. three position Magnus. So I think they're expecting a four position hero to, to come out. Oh, yeah, I mixed it up. I thought. Yeah, I thought TNC Ben uh, Rubik would make no sense. Yeah. And Tiny, tiny. So position four Tiny? Position four Tiny or Magnus position, position four, maybe? one Magnus Tiny in oh. some order. Also, oh, why this band actually? Give another playmaker, someone to make stuff happen. Okay, so other than Void, there's not really a premium carry that's super good against Dark. It used to be yeah. anti-mage, but obviously it's also banned out. Bloodseeker. Ten seconds remaining. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, here. man. <laughs> if you want to lose, go ahead. They pick Bloodseeker, I'm going TNC. They might what? Go back to the Juggernaut or something again? Yeah, Is Juggernaut, that? but Lich, then you've got Lich Jog, really strong lane. Really strong um, lane. It's like a way of dealing with Slark, but you can, you know, your five Slark doesn't want to play against this five man type lineup, and I think that's where getting him could work. Or you get like a Terra Blade, even. I, I can see it. Like this isn't, this is a decent TB game. It's Maybe a, a little TB bit greedy. Game, yeah. Be Medusa tie, but. I feel like there's no, like, 
game winning last pick, you know? Like it's gonna be yeah, an yeah. average here no matter what. It's not like an auto win. Sure. Whereas yeah, oftentimes we see his last pick, suddenly they have like a terrible last pick. Oh, whoa. What do we do now? Mm -hmm. It's not gonna happen this game. TNC lineup is very solid. Power push, late game. Lanes. Not much to complain about. VP, man. That team fight is impeccable. Having like four team fighters is <laughs> ridiculous. But they, they definitely lack catch. Then they somehow well, need they to address also, the catch issue. They lack any way to really push. I mean, you said kind of sort of slow sieges. If they want to play this fast paced game and prevent Slark from counting their lineup, you want to. Try and get racks by like 25 minutes with this Medusa book. You, you That's could where maybe... the jug makes sense to me. Or... What do you think about like a Drow Ranger? Like, oh, for it. oh yeah, Drow's not bad here. It's very Drow... risky against Slark or late game. Like... Yeah, it goes like both ways in the mid game a bit with the silence, but I yeah. think it just doesn't feel like a VP thing. But who knows what they've been practicing and playing at home? Timber Choose Tim... your hero. Okay, can work. Yeah, this was the hero that started getting picked a lot when Magnus came to play, and there it also was picked a ton against these Kunk commits. So we're gonna see Ramsey so on the safe lane. Do so. I, that's gonna struggle so hard against a tiny Magnus, though. I think. But I think they also say he would have struggled mid against the Kunkka. So it's like, okay, let's get a favorable matchup mid with the Kunkka, uh, yep. the Kunkka playing against Timbersaur and. That's a bit better for him. Of course, one change with the new Slark. He's actually quite good against Timber now, because when you pounce on him, he can't chain out anymore. Mm -hmm. Timber used to be quite good against Slark, but now it goes both ways. So if, I think if the Slark just gets they have no way to stop him. Like if this Slark gets I mean, 10, 12 Shadowblade threats, he's going to go completely out of His lane is going to be good no matter what against the Tidehunter. I'm a bit scared for VP. Then if you somehow... Was Slark the answer? Or and this time, gods, you're you're gonna be making the prediction oh, so first. I gotta, I gotta screw us up with my terrible predictions. I, I'm here. hoping that's the thing. No, I, I'm just hoping he goes TNC because I, I was gonna go TNC. Oh, okay. You want me? That means you don't want me to go TNC. No, I want you to go TNC. Oh no, I, I think VP's got this. Really? I think that the adjustment. No, I, I like the adjustment with the last pick Timber. They've got the mid matchup that works for them. I think this this these two teams playing each other is so much about that Armel versus no one matchup, and he solved that with the last pick. Yeah, Medusa's not gonna have a great time, but I don't think Clark can take over the game against a, you know, high Grimstroke lane. I, 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 wanna, I, no, I, wanna, I wanna go TNC, but I can't go against Lich Grimstroke, man. The combo is just ridiculous. I, 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 I have to go VP. Just based on draft, VP should have this. The only way... You had a real opportunity to shine here. Now you're gonna predict a VP for the fourth <laughs> time today. <laughs> Did the only... panel. <laughs> but, hey, through this game, if, if the stock goes completely ham, and just it can happen, so but... So you were just selling TNC's line because you were trying to convince me to pick TNC. He's just trying to bait you? He, 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 spent the, black. he spent the last three minutes of the draft telling me how amazing TNC's draft was. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Kyle, Toby, we have a group of analysts that will predict nothing but VP. Who do you guys think is going to be able to take this one? I will go... I will go with anyone that Kyle says and anyone that Black doesn't say. So when, when the two of these align together, I feel pretty good. <laughs> uh, I think... This game, this game goes both ways. I think VP's big advantage here is that there's just not really that much damage on the side of TNC. I'm sure if the Slark has this dream game, he can take over, but realistically, they're so beefy on the side of VP, and I don't agree with Black. I don't think his lane is going to be free up if it's a Grimstroke and it's Hyde. Yeah. I, I always oh, find it difficult to go against anything which has the Magnus upgrade. Like, when, when you get in power, there's ways for recovery. The team fight is really scary if TNC can actually hit it. Mm -hmm. um, but they need to hit it straight up, or well, else the Tide, the Deuce, uh, the Timber will all survive through. So they pinged out the Medusa just then because they recognize actually with side lane items. They know he's not going mid now, and they're going to look to swap lanes. You can already see them doing just now. The they're going to put Tide mid, who does very well up against the Kunkka, and they ideally want to put Timber in a safe lane solo against a tiny but the tnc they get the read just based on the items and yeah that's, and always that's important really, to scout that's really smart as well kind of always thought the medusa would go to the side lane anyway and then no one would be into the mid lane just because it's it's, it's their normal it, yeah it's their normal places to head to but yeah maybe they wouldn't they need exact match us but tim it'll scout out as much as he possibly can just on bottom lane trying to be more of a pain in the butt the fact the creep wave doesn't aggro to him allows him just to harass no one as he runs into the lane and it will be the Sark on the offlane. So a great first try lane in from TNC, trying to get up at the face 
of the Timpsaw. No one runs this, uh, we'll call this the Radiant off lane for the moment. It's the Radiant solo lane. Mm, and this is important. They're going to TP down bottom with the Grimstroke immediately. You're going to get a free wave on the Timber. If they can contest for this second wave, he's going to hit level two, and it's much harder for this team to kill him. I like how Solo's already trying to play with Ryo. Ryo tried to uh, skewer him back underneath the T1 tower and get some extra damage. It won't happen. Top of lane. There's that tri lane going to work. It's uh, a three man whirling death. Reactive armor. Probably enough regeneration, maybe when Roger. Oh, oh that goodness. damage. Tim's one more attack from Roger. The staff will keep Tim's alive. The, the if you'll get in range for another attack, no, he will not. Definitely shows you. Wow. wow. Really? Slark? Well played. Really well played. He gets the double cancel into the connection. And that you're totally fine with that trade for these two. Look at all the damage and regen they expanded. Yeah. yeah. They got hit so heavily by no one to try and bring him down. And you're right. He's self right? Mm. So, okay. You give away first blood. Goes to Tim's. Lane's still looking pretty good for the Kung. A 10 5 versus a 5 0 Tide Hunter. I thought this lane would have been a little bit more in favor of the Tide Hunter. No, it's very difficult to out DS a Kung because of the way your Tidebringer affects the Nyes. So he's doing a very good job on Armel of just toggling it constantly to ensure he gets the Nyes without wasting it for the harass. And Pasha, level 3 or 4, you can't really compete. He just has to wait it out. Top is trying to look for their own little fun. Solo trying to keep the Magnus out of play. So far done a pretty good job. It's 2-0 for the Magnus versus Ramsey's 10-9. So a lot of denies on that plane. And Solo could tank through a lot by just popping the Frost Shield on himself. But that doesn't help when he gets pulled back in by the Shockwave. He's doing a good job. Oh, you're fine trading. That's the job of a support is to expend the resources. They're going to get the a bottom. They're after no one. The stun's out on him. Lost him up. A couple of charges will not be enough. And Roger's son comes a little too late. The ink swell. I mean, you can prep a long time before it's required. It's just going to be important that they establish dominance in this bottle. And VP is totally fine trading deaths for XP and gold because at some point, the Timber saw notably level six becomes not just unkillable, but a huge threat on a Slark. Tossics as well. Toss level one. Tim just throws no one back into the rest of the TNC lineup. They want a little shimmer and control him. Of course, they'll dodge the sun from Roger. Now, he's got nothing else to give. No mana left in the tap for an ability. He's just trying to put his body on the line, but that's not the one, the body that TNC want. They want to continuously shut down no one. And I can't help but have your words from game from Series 1 in my ear. Like, what happens when no one doesn't get a good game? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's a benefit in this sense, though. You know, Ramses is having a completely free time. But I'm saying, while that, that's starting a huge deal, VP, you want to, you know, minimize the damage a little bit. That was a big death on no one. And that's the thing you see a lot of teams do nowadays. If you can get the one kill into the teleport back and immediately kill that core again and push that long walk of shame, uh -huh. you're going to get yourself to a nice advantage. You notice what item uh, Tipasaur has also expended to try and reduce the duration of this walk of shame? Mm. He's actually burnt the thought uh, Solo was pretty <laughs> frivolous with it in, in the first series. Now no one's doing it. A mark spot in towards the mid, setting up with Tim's to toss him all the way back. Goodbye with a quick little avalanche. Is there a follow-up? No, nope. Pasha knew the torrent was coming. And he'll end up dodging, gets hit by the time, but then sounds up knowing he's out of range of the Kunkka. Armel's doing a great job. Middle, he's super quick on toggling the Tidebringer. I squandered it once. Yeah, really trying to stay up in the face of Pasha while bottom lane, the poison touch from Buki tries to zone out and no will glitch will TP down, so no more Grimstroke on the bottom lane, at least not for the moment. But this is the benefit of 2v1s versus 3 v 2s where up top they've completely shut down this Rio Magnus and now Medusa's in a position as Ramsey's he's the great fans he can win the lane by himself. That's actually a nice stroke of fate goes through Tim's and uh, Ninja Boogie but Gabby getting involved in the fight. Ninja Boogie's got some to stay both stick and the shadow wave but the stun that was on open allows him to secure the kill for Roger. Still a one for one trade off and Gabby continues to steal up this essence Looking for a little bit more. No counts available. He's got high movement speed against Roger. But he'll pull. There he has three permanent agility as well. Not bad for a slow. One of the changes. It's Underlord and Slark now. Steel, agility, 
damage, respectively, for the entire game. Or damage, rather. Ramsey's. He's got some friends on the way. But, uh, burning through the shield. That's why they replaced it with the new one. Hold in touch. Uh, our Ramsey's has the life. 5 HP. And the. L one more tick would have done it. Just one more tick would have done it. Meanwhile, Salt is trying to find the solo kill over on the Magnus. But he's back up and around the trees. A quick shockwave out, but. Solo does find the blood. He'll lose his life, but this is Ninja Boogie. We'll chase him through the tree line, but that one rage creep stuck on him. And then on bottom lane, Tim's in happy to go one on four. And actually, missing the toss, he won't put it over on the Grimstroke, but it won't stop Gabby from diving underneath the mid tower, lane. just mid going lane. after Roger. And mid lane, you're right, the boat is out, looking after the Tide Hunter. X marks the spot, should be not pulling him back, it's already gone. He got close, but if you're if his Tidebringer still did pure damage instead of physical, I think he finds the kill on Tide, but was not enough damage. Really keeping weapons on his toes for the observing today. No, for real. Must well, haste room for Tim's, and he realizes he can't use it at all. Yeah, this Goes back to base. Roger chasing on the bottom lane. Gabby's rotated over, so movements from TNC starting to switch up their lanes. Yeah, and this is the concern, though. You're in a scenario where you have one core on the side that's just not really in the game at all. And the Rior Mag, whereas Timbersaw, even though he's died three times, he's now level five. He's perfectly fine down uh, down the bottom lane. You've got to rotate out of there. And you've effectively now got three supports on the side of TNC. And Gabby, because he was Tri-Land, not hitting level six as fast as you'd like us. Yep. This allows no one just to tank up bottom lane. Timbs will come in to do defense job. He's at least got some good counter push inside the tiny once you can find more levels than three. And Ninja Boogie's doing a good job now of keeping the Deuce down. So Ramsey's, is that just that time you want to go jungle? I think so. It's more about the fact that Ninja Boogie and the entire tri of TNC have now moved towards top. So it's just become a little dangerous up here. And you're already at a point, Treads and three Wraith fans, that you're strong enough to just farm woods. But... We'll see. They did see that Tim's was rotating on the bottom lane, so they know there's max two heroes up here, so they probably feel more confident. Armel will actually Ooh. swap into the bottom yeah, lane. There's a huge stack that he'll probably want to farm up if he's, if he's given some face. No one pulled his own creep wave over. He's just building up the direct bar stack, so even if they were attacking to him, that's 25 arm they have to get through, but Armel care as long as he takes the majority of this neutral stack. The TNC has been the ones preparing. And he got a lot of it. 68 CS now over on the Kunker. His net worth almost a thousand above Medusa. Just, just on top. Roger Burns, I think he's both over on the Kunker, but X marks a spot. Avalanche, hold him in position, and they bring the boat down. But Roger, timing's a little bit off from TNC. So Roger can survive a little bit longer. He'll still die to Tim's fists, but uh, they had to work for it. That's a great game so far by Armel. Going for that typical double bracer that I think... I want to say no one made popular at first, but I could be wrong. The question is, will we see the Radiance Conquer? The China showed off off of the China. But now it looks like uh, the, keeping the damage up is good. Ninja Boogie oh, no. be barely in time. That's on Ramsey's. He didn't snake him and he didn't even auto-attack him. He probably didn't recognize that Roger was TPing in because he certainly would have had the damage to finish that kill. For VP. Remember, VP went through one hell of a marathon of a uh, full, full best of three. TNC's road to this end, this uh, winner's bracket match was a lot easier. It's going to be a really big match here because I'll be honest, I would not want to face E Home in a decider. Starting the upper bracket's so critical, especially when you consider the way you, know, you win one BO3. And all of a sudden, your top six. That's enough points to almost get to a TIN fight. Right? And v VP looked like a couple of problems as well in the first series. Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't look clean. The dropping from Eharm was able to be superior as well. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, the Slark's being bullied a bit by the Dusa. There's uh, no one up here helping him. Yeah, sure, there's a Dazzle pulling a bit, but one of the downsides Dyer's of a tiny support just doesn't have the levels to really influence the map at the moment. Level five, he's just been camping bottom. It's an issue because the mag is looking to recover in the middle of the well. Armel farming jungle, but we'll see. He's going to go Shadow Blade. I like that choice. He's going to try and get involved early. 
because that does make it good for those quick rotations. To stop things like this happening, and you can build into a still bridge too, right? Mm -hmm. Against no one. Because he's just a beast on the bottom lane. That Clark is the power. Missing the power over on Sol, that would have been a guaranteed kill, especially with the rotation from the bell! <laughs> well, that's one way to remove the shield. Comes up, Xbox spot boat coming in too. It's gonna connect. No, it actually doesn't exactly. Same with the Ravage. Just a quick shadow amulet for Armel. Some little bit of invis and time to buy. While Ninja Boogie chasing down Grimstroke, who begins his to find him in the tree line. Pounds forward, finds the kill, but then Ramsey's with a split shot damage. Kills off Ninja Boogie, and Gabby has to hide in the trees. They're actually teeping back to shrine up quickly and get back into the fight. In the meantime, the Rior, with that DD rune and the empower on the catapult and himself, does take that mid tower. Arguably the most important one for a dire side Radiant's to acquire. Kind of almost forget about the Magnus. They've been giving him that, that mid lane for the last five minutes. So he's gotten the levels. He, he's gotten the farm. Top lane, Armel. Going in again, Gabby. This time the leash will come in, but so will the chain cross bounce up and down, but it will not keep the bounce going back into Armel. Tries to go in this again with the Shadow Amulet. Tim creates some space and then tosses him back up the Kree Wave away from no one's timber chain. But you know no one. The shark from above, oh. and he goes straight through the Kunker. No where he's hiding, Dazzle. No shallow grave leveled up, even though he's level 6 decided to bypass it. And what a rotation in from no one. Having all the time to farm, and now he's uh, two, three, four on the board for KDA. A little sloppy from PNC because Rior, he does such a great job killing the tower, but now he rotates to bottom. He's still not looking to get involved, and PNC are fighting up top like this is going to be an even battle, and it really just is not. The entire squad of VP show up, and they blow the Ravage and yeah, so clean up the tower. Is the blink tagger for the Magnus really that important? Especially when the Magnus is probably going to die. Silence up, Roger's standing by him, land the stun, and uh, it's very easy with the doctor to have enough damage to get through the rest of that Magnus. Putting the shield over on Roger, actually not triggering the way they would like it to on the Magnus, but he cannot juke it through the tree lines. Very sinister gaze, and the Magnus walks back into him and delays that blink back of timing. MVP, as always, do a great job of ensuring that Ramses gets the kill. Bye are the best in the world at giving their star players that extra gold influx from these last hit kills. And here comes a smoke though from the side of uh, TNC. It's an Invis Kunkka. Shadowblade finished. The worth killing Courier was carrying through the bot as well as the Crimson Guard. They decide to let it go. Ramsey's and Smart Spot and want the core. That's the bigger kill for them and they claim it too. No one Okay, try and find a rebuttal. Tim's is on the run. They've already used their abilities, but with the arrival of the Magnus and the RP, maybe they think twice. No, nope, no one. Timber chains underneath the tier one tower. Tim can toss him, but that won't stop no one from just charging forward. Especially when he's got the frost shield on him. Slow down everyone that wants to attack him, then find an easy target. Ninja Boot, chuck him to cut the trees, make it a faster line over the walls. He's so deep! Yeah, he's the double the chain And now with the double chain out, how do you actually stop this? The creep wave kept the line for a very long time. Lynch can now back up a little bit further, but he doesn't have enough life to get up the ramp and away to safety. The as still did end up dying, but took the attention both Pasha and no one. Look at the inventory on Solo, by the way. He's in his death, he purchased oh. trees. He's got six. They're ready for the Shadow Blades. I love Armel lining up with the Radiant Crew Wave. We've got the cleave onto both the heroes. The Ravage from Pasha, he's actually going to blow it. Trying to get some distance, but the X Mark is the ship still going to come in and kill him off. We're watching the Armel show right now, Toby. That's what we're going to need to continue keeping the channel tuned to if you'd like to see a TNC victory. So far, doing a great job. We have the Shadow Blade on Kunkka almost finished on start. But as I said, Solo, he's aware of how this game is going to be played out. I expect to see him placing sentries all over the high grounds and towers to ensure his course stays safe. And another mode from TNC, this time looking ahead, possibly towards the top front area of the jungle, just continuing to hunt Ramses, who has yet to skill his ultimate. Nice sentry board. They find him. Rio's in the neighborhood. He's got Blink Dagger available and RP, but no one and Solo nicely split up. But it doesn't matter when I'm up, just TP away to safety. Where are these stuns available when Ravage is down? And you have a Timber Sword and a Tide Hunter just standing there. Yeah. Shadowblade gonna be finished as soon as Gabby finishes the stacks. TNC gonna try and continue just staying aggressive. It's very important. The tempo lineup, they wanna find that initial kill and then chase for more. VP, 
you're looking to just bait, get, turn around with an RP. We already saw how willing they are oh, to play. Oh, oh no! The Magnus! They didn't have enough for this! Our Mel will come in and clean up a lot of it. He walked into the middle and got whacked down by the power. Gabby didn't really seem to want to get into that. Oops. Indeed. Meanwhile, the pro takes bottom lane. But our middle's got even more money now. Building into the armor is going to go for the. Sh I don't think he's in range. Okay, he'll get in range to cut once, but they'll still lose bottom tier one. But the current is sniped up by Gabby. That had ultimate all on it. That was uh, okay. okay. Vision here. This would be a dead lich. Could be. But then again, together oh, no. we go once again. Let the chain of frost fly. Dazzle will buy back quickly, looking to stay involved in this engagement. Needs to try and keep Gabby alive and fighting. Empower him up. Where are these RPs? You've still got Blink Dagger RP available. I haven't seen it used. He's had the Blink Dagger for a good good three to four minutes. You can't kill these guys. The Bash brothers are way too tanky. Well, they decide to skewer on these. No one's happy to fight, but he's running very low on mana. Arcane boots off full down in two seconds time, but a triple kill in from no one. He wants to get more. Gabby does not have the shadow. They burn the ravage. It's an ultra kill for no one. 17 minutes in. They really are the Bash Brothers. Yeah, they, they're not afraid of anything, Toby. Like, you're walking around with near 4,000 hero combined. 4,000 health, rather, with the Vlads and a Crimson Guard. Like, they were talking about the, the Slark snowballing. How do you kill a Timber Saw at C? Ever. You, you, you need the Silver Edge, right? And you're seeing, actually, uh, where Timber Saw spent almost all of his time as well with that heat map. Everything is on the bottom lane, and all the kills have been on the dire side of the river. Aggressive and behind the tier 2 towers. You gotta play it. Snowball hero. You get ahead and all of a sudden you're too damn tanky. Requires two or three enemy heroes just to stop you from diving, let alone actually threaten you. And they're gonna smoke on the side of TNT. I don't know if this is the way they're trying to play this game at the moment. It they're might be more time to push. Or maybe a Roche play? Oh. Nope. Well, they don't have enough damage for Roshan. The tire is standing up the hill. They won't find anyone there. I think they're probably still just looking for the Dusa. They have the jump power. There's Gabby who can come under the cover of Shadow, Bl Shadow Blade. They do not want Pasha. Sentry Wards go down. It's like has to cut his way out through the tree lines. The creeps actually hold him in. So is the Sinister Gate. Pulling Gabby back down. No other choice but to pop the ultimate. The Shadow Dead's away to safety. Yeah, no one really wants to find these kills. He just chains forward. And if they could find Tim does find one thing underneath his own observer forward. Using that 4 4 4 combination of Avalanche Toss, Rod, no stun available for him either. It, it will give away the ward though, I, I think. Roger, uh, he's gonna bring the courier out. Yeah, because they don't want to waste another sentry. They already have the one on the low ground. And it's just so critical that you have these sentries against double shadow. But then Slark could just find another fight. Roger in real trouble, being pulled back down again by the shockwave, keeping him in range of the Slark's attack. And the next mark spot, Marsha. They just go from one to the next, pulling back in. Boat will crunch. And Tyler, no ravage of double, still on cooldown for 20 seconds. But he doesn't matter when he's got that very thick hide. TNZ just can't break. There's observe boards from both sides up on top of the hills. Both have extra information, but look for an easier target. Over towards the ledge. Dolo dies once again. Oh, the, this is how you want to play the game, though. Just keep buying these pickoffs. They've got this great vision place. Continue playing around it. Find kills on supports. Threaten for more. And then force the rotations and the TP from these big tanky cores. You can back off. But this is exactly how you want to play this kind of lineup on the side of TNC. As long as Gabby can keep being involved in this too, this watch that agility start to rack up. Yep. And 19, 20 minutes in, up to permanent agility stolen. 20 minute bounty runes will start to appear. So there'll be contest over this. There will be a Scotty finished on the Medusa now. And VP all of a sudden a lot stronger. Might look the threat for Sean. They won't take any damage from doing so. And as long as they can avoid a massive RP Kunkka combo, there's not a ton of AoE to worry about when you compare a massive team fight. Oh, actually, doesn't have a lot of map to work with, and Radiant in fact, they're not even there. TP's in coming back over from Kanko, drops everything. Quick one charge that actually gives him enough to fight. Ninja Boogie, he's looking at the front lines. Tar 
Connects over on on Maybe if you can't row shot on it, Magnus, he's ready for the jump in, but they're not finding the exact opening they want. Tim's will be the one who can jump in. He's got the blink tag for available. But they're swarming like sharks, TNC around the Roche pit. There's jump in from Atani. Avalanche and Tops. Roshan, Roshan down to 800 HP. Magnus still waiting. The Ravage able to actually clip on him. And they've already got the kill over on Tiny. Magnus now says you believe in. Look at the RP. The, the follow up as well with the poison, but the double chain frost is going to really start to bounce back down again. This is horrendous for TNC. The AK model, of course, did manage to get into the hands of the Slark. So we will pounce himself away. But that's still Conquer and Tiny down. That's, the pro did, actually, that's not that bad that's for terrible. TNC when you yeah. think about it. They got the Roche kill and the tower off that, so the Golden Fairy really didn't change much. Yeah, you're going to lose some farming time yep. on RML, but I bring this up a lot. He spent his gold before he died. He bought those two parts of the KB, so he's not really losing gold. Obviously, you want to be on map and Dying, yep. you give away bounty, but it's just making the best of a crappy mm -hmm. situation. It's not like VP can really capitalize on it. They've got Vegas to push in. Their Don't Ravage is down. Stand. TNC's RP is down. So everything just goes back to the status quo. But yep. that, does that, is that actually in your favor for TNC? And knowing Rand is getting bigger and bigger. He's the number, number one net worth on the field. No one seems to be untouchable. Even the tight hunters very the silver edge. Yep, done with the silver edge up. Tim's comes in for the avalanche toss. They're just breaking no one up. But then again, here comes your push shield. Here comes your support from Solo and Roger. No one pulled in, but then he gets timber chains away from the boat of Kunkka. And they're looking to hunt. Gabby Shadow just is worn off. He's got silver edge available once more. So if they want to turn to no one, got the opportunity to do so. But there's five Chris from Virtus Pro ready to fight. Even an early gem of true sight on the Tide Hunter, so no hiding inside the Shadow Blades. And you can see this is the way VP wants to play. Enough with the shenanigans, enough with the guerrilla warfare. They're putting on the red coat uniforms and just walking in straight lines. And I don't know what you got to do when you're playing against lineups like the one TNC currently running. It's just so frustrating to play against the Slark. Your lineup is this slow. With no, you don't really have a true Slark counter. The Timber Saw counts, but mm -hmm. you can't catch him. Your only other choice is to force down the lanes, right? Get a better trade off. But while you've got Slark creeps, you've got Tim's doing exactly the same thing. You're going to intercept the creep wave in the mid, yep. making it so VP have to keep this creep wave alive. And that's difficult when you can see that Magnus is just going to spam shockwaves from safety. Bear in mind, another concern at the side of VP. Well, well, well Tim's. Like... There's your jump in. Grabbing Solo, and he doesn't have enough life to survive this as the Frost Shield stays in range. So Tim's, who yellow craved up, stay low, stay slow. Come back up, both dead without a bite. And your RP, he caught the dude, but your rabbit, it'll create a little bit more space. And no one, he's in the middle of this entire engage. Turn up the stone gaze, this boogie can't go anywhere. Three heroes without buyback. Randy's got a lot of damage with the T4 Towers, and he's out of mana, but Gabby needs to kill off this Dusa. He has no other choice inside the shadow, he's able to do it in Armel. A triple kill now for the Kunker. It was him that got it with the cleave damage. He's been regathering up the gem. No one could not pick it up. They may even have another chance. X marks the spot. No torrent follow-up, just keeping him there, ready for the Slark to attack, but without the Silver Edge ready. They do not want to fight that Timbersaw. Yeah. And that fight is completely different if they aren't able to deny the Aegis in the pit. It's the game changer. If Medusa is able to play with that confidence, they're going to be able to fight differently. And great RP from Yor. They whip the boat completely. I don't think they expected the skewer. But a little bit of a mystery. But that's the down not the downside, but the danger of playing as Wombo Wombo. You never, it's got to happen so fast, and getting it perfect is always going to be challenging. But they're definitely showcasing the fact of the amount of damage, like the top two damage deals in that last fight went to the Timber as well as the Kunker. Kunker just finding these great cleaves and they're looking to get into more action. Some pick up from TNC on the hunt. No one is going to be the primary target to get me in prison and they could have had this any better. Silver Edge to crack up, the boat will come in and that's a very dead Timber Sword down for a minute and a bit. Smoke to the bounty room. Tried and true strategy. Probably gonna see that a lot of this tournament. Is the economy actually like it's worth that much, right? To pick up the bounty room. Because we always have the teams contest for it. Uh, I, 
problem is if you start giving them away, you're in a you're effectively giving away a lead. So if you're confident that in a certain timing, like five ten minutes from now, you'll just take the game for sure, then by all means go for it. But at this stage of the game, it's just so much money. Ninja Boogie trying to come in to do the D ward. Yeah, he's yeah. able to reveal this pretty easily when his Shadow Dance turns off. He's looking for a hunt. That's going to be a little, little too deep. But this oh. one is a lot more achievable. Red <laughs> caught out near the tier two tower. Looking to break him. They pull him back in. They're using both controls as the leech is still available. Abby realizes he doesn't have enough damage to get through Fancy. Uncle will come up a as ravage. well. Pops the Ravage. He'll only connect over on the Slark. And he'll go Invis. And then Shadow Dance begins his TP. And they cannot stun him because they can't see him. Huge abilities going down for Virtus Pro when they did find the kill they wanted. Man, Gabby and Armel are both playing so well. Pushing their limits to the max. Just their decision making combined with their aggression. It's insane. He has 21 stacks on Slark. And he just got the Ravage burn. They have a full two minutes where he can just run around the map with no real threat whatsoever. And now their item itemization is getting even better to enable them. Tim gonna get pushed. It's coming in. Ninja Boot is nearby. A double poison touch. No one's gonna go into the fight, but he already gets broken once from the Silver Edge. The RP is ready to go. Blink in one second time, and that's exactly what he does. Blink straight into the fight, holding in both Timber and they were meant to beat the unkillable a ninja boogie of all your all players come on with armor uh we'll take the kills it's perfect play from tnc they recognize their timing advantage arc is strong there's no ravage you're not afraid of medusa timso anymore because you know there's no actual follow-up there's no peel these heroes are just gonna die especially if you have the silver edge and the slark and bt is available really for tiny so he's to the lines quickly can just brought the he can beat slark so the best career you could have lost. No one throws down the shark room and they're actually tossing in no one with Tim's holding him in position. The sun is at the boat and it's a dieback for Timbersaw. No one is down to 86 seconds without buyback available. Still no deucer up either. Oh boy. This has escalated very quickly for Virtus Pro TNC. They've got Double silver edges, they'll mix the skewer back, but it won't stop them from clamping the bottom lane of Rags. With Timber dead for so long, they can go for more. Tim's, he's looking for a toss back target, anyone to bring in range of the Tim. attack. Now, maybe Chain Frost, keep the distance. Oh, really? Away. That bounces all the way out to Armel and back over. Okay, just let it keep going. Sure, why not? See, no. This is this a is huge so lead that they can throw away. That's a conquer with a huge spree. It goes to solo, so that's the upside at least, but maybe overstaying their walk? Just, just a little bit. I mean, that, that perfect demonstration of the last two minutes of both the strength and the weakness of TNC. They are so good at capitalizing on advantages and so bad at recognizing when they've got all they can get and it's time to go. They look like they're still like, there was some three missed initiations underneath tier four yeah, towers. Th trying those to are be fine. You're fishing. It's all good. But at a certain point, when your boat is full to the brim, you can pull the lines in and take it back to shore. There's no need after the skewer misses to try and toss back on top. Right. It's fine. You know, AK it's, gold lead. They yeah. only lost Starmel. Not out and you know. Yep, they, they show they can deal with both the Timbersaur as well as the Dusa. I still think they have a lot of issues with the um, being held together by Spine and Double Chain Frost. Yeah, but like, they're always grouped up for this. Mm -hmm. And bear in mind that like, they got the big lead because they capitalized on their huge window. Slark is a go. hero. Ooh. Underneath the tower, I would really like to go for it, but they'd almost skewer him back away from the tower. Just bear in mind, that fight was ta taken when Slark had a bonus 60 agility, not counting the 10 he had permanently. Mm -hmm. It's a snowball hero, not like you don't want to fight the Slark with stacks. It's like rule number yeah. one. That was the fight that TNC wanted. VP gave it to them, so be it. Roche is going to spawn in a minute and a half, and that's going to be an engagement. And see, you got to be careful because it's still real difficult fight into the Medusa Tide combination. Yep. And so far it's hard the arm out though. I feel like every single engagement starts with an X in the torrent, followed by like an X into boat, and immediately two VP heroes are dead and TNC just wash over them like a tsunami. I don't think that that's something you can count on when you consider the vision advantage and the rating advantage of fighting near the pit. Do you actually like this build coming in from Armel too, where he's going for the heart? 
uh, as opposed to the, the Daedalus? I'm not sure. That's a good question. I don't mind it. It, it does give you a ton of damage. Um, and the status resist is incredible when you're playing against Tide, but it, it, we'll see. I think he's got PKB already. I have no idea. I'm not a Kunkle player. I'll trust Armel. Seems like a lot of defense items uh, being put into the Kunker where you think he's be doing a lot more, a lot more damage, and the aggression items in the MKB is coming in for the Slark. A lot of sentries everywhere from both sides. They keep vision control, and along Gabby just walking up some double self wretch is making it difficult. And also an invis rune, the Magnus. Okay, yeah, okay. You put you put an charge on him. I think they understand that the sentry is fine, but Gabby still decides to walk into him. Current will connect on the Dusa. Mm. Remember, there's two heroes who are not here at the moment. That's Tim's and no one. No one's on the bottom lane. Yeah, the, this is the issue with the VP line, where they, they just don't have real catch. They have great team fights, sure, but they're being punished because Armel and Gabby can just continuously push the limits, and they're never really punished. Specifically, Armel, he operates with impunity, and at any point, he can catch a support next, and that guy's going to die. Roshan's being done. Tim's has had a lot of momentum to the bottom lane, so PP may they have to be quick about this. Or else they're gonna have a really, really bad trade off in the bottom lane. Now rapid the from three and double soul bind chip cross is already out. Kunker. Oh accident to BKB. They yeah. don't give a crap. They stand their ground. No one's already broken because they got the double summer. They can even chain stuff. And then you find the kill on the Grimstrom. Ramsey isolated. Dusa is the last one to kill off, and he held that stone gates for so long. Kunkun will die. But Slark is on the hunt, and your RP finally it has been used. That double buyback in from Virtus Pro. They want to help out Ramsey's Titan Grimstroke. They're on their way to being able to watch the tried. Ramsey's slow. Is he actually going to live long enough? And it's actually Slark with the slow. It's not long enough. And with the double torrent, maybe now Arm um, Hosher can turn back on. Four buybacks in total. Committed in from Virtus Pro. Yeah. And back still, well. maybe they have enough from this. TNC is a triple kill for Ramsey. Now you bring him in from TNC. Over to Tusa. Does Ramsey have enough to survive? The Dane on top of Pop just removed a lot of the damage thanks to the Anchor Smash. Now maybe they do. Yep, they go after Ramsey. He's the primary target. Marsh is only walking him up. All right, you kill him on the way through. Why not? They're both yeah. dead for two minutes, and GG is finally called. Burst Pro through everything, including the kitchen sink at TNC. And TNC threw it straight back in the face. Yep, and I. I think they played game by TNC. They executed their lineup to perfection. I think VP does make a mistake trying to take that engagement into the Slark with 20 stacks. That's the turning point in this game. But I respect how they played that initial, that end game fight. Had to try and get some sort of initiation. They get a Ravage on two, but they don't actually have the damage to kill Slark or Tunka. Yep. 